Hey, I'm Mechanical Ninja Engineer, and this is part two for my three pound BattleBot Rytron. Today, we'll be continuing to build upon what we made in the last video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Mainly in today's video, we'll be constructing the actual grabbing arm of Rytron. Now, fair warning, there is a lot that needs to be done when building the grabbing arm. And so as a result, we won't be able to finish everything in today's video because I don't want to rush through anything. But we'll still get a lot done and we'll end today's video with a working grabbing arm. Not fully complete, but working. But enough talk. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Real quick update, two small things have changed since the last video. Number one, if you see the motor plates, I've narrowed them down quite a lot and they're now being held in place by two screws instead of four, which makes it a lot easier to swap out motors and they're still on there super snug. And number two, on the other side of the motor housings, these brackets are no longer horizontal, they are now vertical. Someone commented on the last video asking why I didn't do this. And I thought about doing this, but decided not to, because the other way, it's a lot easier to swap out parts in case something breaks. But after trying to get the top and bottom blocks to perfectly line up after taking the covers off a few times, I just figured it wasn't worth it, and here we are. So with all that being said, let's get started on the grabbing arm. Now, our grabbing arm is going to be powered by this high-tech servo, link in the description. But instead of mounting the servo into the frame of the robot like any sane person would, I'm instead going to try to mount it into the actual arm itself. I do this for mainly two reasons. Number one, it helps save space in the robot, which allowed me to make the robot smaller and more compact. And number two, to a much lesser extent, it'll add weight to the arm, which will help it come down faster and get a better grip. Granted, it is only like 50 grams, so it's not going to help out that much, but every little bit helps. So to get started, I'm going to cut out a few 3 quarter inch wide strips out of my half inch thick HDPE board. I'm now going to take one of them and cut them into two 5 inch long pieces, and then take another and cut them into two 4 inch long pieces, like these. Now we're going to want to cut the last section into two 2 inch long pieces, but before we do that, we're going to want to cut it down so it's only 3 eighths of an inch thick. Just like these. So the idea is that we'll take the two 4 inch long pieces and attach them together, and then take the two 2 inch long pieces and attach them to each bottom side of that, and lastly attach the two 5 inch pieces to the bottom sides of those. Just like that. As you can see, the bottom is plenty large enough to fit our servo in, the top is large enough to bolt the head of the arm on, which we have yet to build, and the center overlapping sections are plenty wide enough to put in some screws and make everything structurally sound. But before we bolt this together, I'm first going to place my servo a half inch up from the bottom and mark where the wings and cables sit. I'll then cut a shallow channel for the wings to slide into and drill a small hole for the cable to fit through. Beautiful, just like these. Now you're probably wondering, don't these channels compromise strength? Yes they do, but only temporarily. We'll get back to that in a minute, but for now let's go ahead and bolt everything together. Oh, and for screws, I'm using these super aggressive wood screws. Is it overkill? Maybe. But then again, is there really such a thing when it comes to battle bots? And here we are after the pieces have been mounted together. Now to kind of complete the main structure of this, I'm going to cut out another small block that fits perfectly in the back and bottom of the arm and screw that in place as well. With that, I'm now going to take a short break to soften a few of the edges and try to make the whole thing look less like a block. You know what, I'm actually really starting to like how that looks. I was scared for a while it'd be too blocky, but it actually kind of looks like a tank turret. It's kind of cool. So next, I'm going to cut out two pieces of Lexan and bolt one to the top and bottom of the arm to help increase strength and make it more rigid. The top piece is basically going to cover the whole top of the arm. We may have to cut out a window later for the servo gear to poke through, but we'll get back to that. And the bottom piece will be a lot shorter, just barely sticking past the channels. That way, once again, we'll have room for the servo gear to poke through. 
I'm also going to mount the bottom piece about a quarter inch from the back so we'll have room to add a hinge later. There we go. As you saw in the video, I made sure to put plenty of screws in both the top and bottom plate because they're going to be getting pushed and pulled against a lot by the servo. Speaking of the servo, we basically have one of two ways we could get it in here. We could A, do what I originally planned and remove this side that has the cable hole drilled in it, which would entail taking out eight screws from four different sides. Or B, we could do what I think I'm actually going to end up doing, and that is cut out the top chunk of the hole we drilled. That way we'll only have to unscrew eight screws from one side, remove the top plate, and then just drop the servo in place. I originally didn't want to do this because I was scared it would make the arm weak, but since we have so many screws around it, I don't think it will really make that much of a difference. That is still super sturdy, so we are in business. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to take this 2.5 inch long hinge and mount it onto the back of the arm and the frame of the robot. that. There's a lot of weight in that top arm which we're definitely going to need if we're going to fight spinners. So now we want to work on connecting the servo in the arm to the main body of the robot. So I'm going to take off the back plate of the arm, drop in my servo, and try to figure out where I want it to anchor to. Once we figured out that spot, we're going to want to drop a screw in there, but if we just put a screw in the Lexan, it could get pretty easily torn out. So what I'm going to do instead is sandwich a small block in between the top and bottom frame and screw it in place on each side. Like that. Then we can just send the anchoring screw into the middle of the block. That way it won't be pulling on just the Lexan, but it'll instead be pulling on the whole frame. But how do we connect the servo to the anchor? Well, with this one and a quarter inch tall rod. As you can see, it's bent on the top so we can slide the servo's lifting gear in there, and it's looped on the bottom so we can send the anchoring screw right through it. Is this too thin? Well, for testing, definitely not. For combat, eh, probably. I'll get a thicker one later. Now, we're going to want to secure this into place, but before we do, we're going to want to cut that small window out of the top of the Lexan cover that we talked about earlier. But after that, we are good to go. That looks good, but let's plug it in and see if it works. Please excuse my electronic mess, I just ripped it out of my RC boat. That is looking pretty good. As I'm sure you saw, there's about an inch and a half gap at the front, which is deliberate because I'm saving room to put on my grabber head. I'm also quite happy with how wide it opens and closes. I mean, if we wanted to make it open wider, we could, but I just don't think it's necessary, and plus, we'd lose some torque. Speaking of torque, this thing has a pretty impressive handshake. I mean, we're of course not going to crush any bots, but with the right head, we should be able to get a pretty solid grip. Now, I know this arm is not complete just yet. We still have to make the grabbing head, make it so the robot can self right and tether the arm to the robot so when we get hit by a spinner, it won't destroy our servo. But as it sits in its current state, the arm weighs in at 249 grams, which if we add that to the weight of the rest of the robot, brings us up to 580 grams, which is just over one pound. And with that, we are sadly going to have to end part two. I'm so sorry we have to stop here. I wanted to build and do more, but sadly if I did, I wouldn't be able to upload this video on time. With that being said though, stay tuned because part 3 is coming out soon. And in fact, if you're from the future, it's already out in the links in the description. Also, links for all the electronic parts are down there as well. Like my high torque servos and my inexpensive transmitter. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to subscribe.
But what about self-writing? Can it self-write? Of course not, you ding-dong. At least not yet.